Okay, this will start our very last lesson, Celebrate, Celebrate. With the first part of your slope field, what you will need to do is sketch a slope field, and you're only going to be interested in sketching a segment through those given ordered pairs, and it's going to show the kind of um, slope that you would have at that particular point. So we will set up a chart. Now you will not get points for doing a chart. However, it does tend to help keep all of your values straight. And so we're gonna um, look at here your dx, dy dx, and add a given ordered pair. So the first one here at zero, zero, and if I substitute in zero, zero into our given um, derivative, then we're going to have 0 over negative 1, which is 0. And so I'm going to sketch a segment that would depict a slope of 0 through that coordinate. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the point 2, 0. And again, when I substitute in, I'm going to have 0 over 1, so that is going to give me 0. And again, I'm just going to do a short segment through that point. Now let's move on to our other point. We have 0, 1. And again, whenever I substitute that in, I'm going to have 1 over negative 1. So I have negative 1, and so I'm going to sketch a slope segment that has that slope of negative 1. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, just as long as it's tilted negatively. That's going to be the important part. Um, our next point is to 1. And again, I'm going to substitute that in. And so that's going to be 1 over positive 1, which is positive 1. So here I'm going to have a positive slope through that point. The next point we can look at would be 0, 2. And again, we're going to substitute in that value. And so I'm going to have 4 over negative 1. So that's going to give us negative 4. And so here we're going to have an even steep steeper segment there. Then I'm going to use the point 2, 2 and substitute that in. That's going to be 4 over 1, which is a positive 4. So I know here I'm going to have that positive 4 slope. And that's all there is to sketching a slope field. For our next problem, they want us to write the equation of a tangent line and they give us at the point x but they've also given us this ordered pair 2, 3. And so that's what we'll be using. <clears throat> now the equation of the line tangent, that's where we're going to have our y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We already know our y1 and our x1 from the given. If we had the slope, then we would be able to finish our line. So we're going to plug in our ordered pair into our given slope. So we're going to estimate the value of dy dx at the ordered pair to 3. And so we do need to show this step. And when I substitute in, I'm going to have 9 over 1, which is going to give us 9. So we're ready to write our equation. We have y minus 3 equals 9 times x minus 2. And that's our equation of our tangent line. Now the next thing they want us to do, we have y equals f of x, and they want us to estimate f at 2.1. So what we're going to do here, let's do some rearranging, and I'm going to change y to be f of x, and I'm going to move that 3 over to the other side, and now I'm going to estimate f at 2.1 by just plugging in 2.1. And when you substitute that in, then you can stop. You don't have to finish solving that. All right, so now we've answered all those questions. And our next problem, we are going to have to actually go back and find f of x at a particular point. So Again, part C, this is usually where you can rack up quite a bit of points here. Now, we were given that dy over dx is equal to y squared over x minus 1. 
and we are going to first separate. In other words, we're going to get our dy and our y coordinate on one side and our dx and x minus 1 on the other. And a lot of this is just a matter of shifting around our variables. After we separate, we do integrate, and that's going to be the integral of 1 over y squared dy equals the integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx. <clears throat> and now we're ready to integrate this. Now do remember this really becomes the integral of y to the negative 2 dy equals the integral of 1 over x minus 1 dx. And so when we do our antiderivative, that is going to end up being uh, negative y to the negative 1 equals, and here the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of this is the numerator. So I know this is natural log, absolute value of x minus 1, and then plus c. We don't need to forget that constant. And now we're going to use our initial condition here of 2, 3. So I'm going to substitute in that given point, 2, 3. So that's going to be negative 1 third equals the natural log, absolute value of 2 minus 1 plus c. And we see here that c is going to be negative 1 third. A quick reminder that that is all equal to 0. The natural log of 1 is 0. And so now we're ready to write our equation. We can go back to this negative 1 over y equals the natural log absolute value of x minus 1 plus c, which is negative 1 third. And then you can um, rearrange this and solve for y. You know there's a negative, so I'm going to move that negative over. And really, I'm going to flip over everything. So that's going to be natural log absolute value of x minus 1 minus 1 third. And that's going to be our y function. Okay, so for our next problem, we are solving or sketching a slope field. So again, it's a good idea to do a chart. And again, this chart will not count toward any points, but it sure does help you keep all of your values separated. And again, we have our dy dx. So I'm going to start all the way down here at the bottom. So I have the point 0, negative 1. And so when I substitute that in, I get positive 1. And so that's going to be tilted upward with a positive slope. Okay, for our next ordered pair, we're going to go over, let's see, it's going to be positive 1, negative 1. And so when I substitute that in, that looks like we're going to have 2 minus a negative 1. So that's going to be 3 and it's a positive 3, so it's going to have a bit of a steeper slope, but it's still positive. We're now going to go to the point 0, 1, and if we substitute in 0, 1, it looks like we're going to have negative 1, so that slope is going to be negative 1. Uh, we have the point 1, 1, and if we sub that in, it looks like we're going to get 1, and that is a positive 1. So we try to make it look very similar to the one we already had, if we can. And then we have uh, the point 0, 2. So 0, 2. And we're going to substitute that in. That's going to give us negative 2. And so that is going to have a steep negative slope. And then we're going to substitute in 1, 2. And for 1, 2, it looks like we're going to have 0. So here we do need to make sure we have a clear 0 slope there. The next part of question 2 wants us to find our second derivative, but notice that it wants us to make sure that's in terms of x and y. So to find our second derivative here, um, do pay attention to your notation. That's going to be equal to... Well, the derivative of 2x is 2 minus the derivative of y is 1. But again, we need to write dy dx to note that we did the derivative of y with respect to x. And here's where we have to be careful with our notation. We need that in terms of x and y. So we're going to go back and substitute in place of dy dx this 2x minus y that we were given. 
And so there's our second derivative in terms of x and y. Now for the second part of this, they want us to determine the concavity of the solution curves in, in quadrant two. So very quickly, we can look at a sketch at quadrant two and notice all the ordered pairs over here, it's gonna be a negative x and a positive y. So what we can do is evaluate our second derivative for this general form here at negative x, positive y. And when we do that, we have two minus, well, if I plug in a negative x, that's gonna be negative two x minus y. And really we need to determine a sign here, so let's distribute. So I'm gonna have two plus two x plus y. So here when I distribute that negative, notice everything becomes positive there. So in our second quadrant here, that second derivative evaluated at negative x, y, that is positive. So since we have our second derivative is positive in quadrant two, then I know that here all of those solution curves, and we can just pull this from the question itself, all the solution curves are concave up because our second derivative was positive. Okay, for our second or our third part of this question, we want to know um, whether or not we have a relative min, max, or neither at the point x equals two. Now this one is a very tricky question because you're asked for a relative min, a relative max, or neither. Please keep in mind where those come from. Those are all classified critical points. So before we can do this, we have to talk about a critical point, and a critical point is going to be where your derivative is zero or your derivative is undefined. So we have to check that first because that's the first thing. Then after that, you can go to a relative min or max or neither. So we have to be careful here. And so we need to check the value of our derivative at the point two, three. And so let's do that. We have our derivative. Now for us to have a relative min or max, that derivative's got to be zero at that point. So let's go back and check. So here, I'm gonna look at the value of dy dx when I plug in the point two, three. So I'm gonna have two times two and then minus three. And I need to note here, we're checking this at the point two, three. And so here, notice that derivative is gonna be one. So since our dy dx or our derivative at two, three is not equal to zero, then we can say f has neither a relative min or max at x equals two. Okay, for our next problem, they are wanting us to sketch a solution curve through the point zero, one. So the first thing I would do, of course, is pinpoint where zero, one is. And then from this, we are going to um, sketch through here what's gonna look like a curve, and we're gonna try to mimic the best that we can these solutions through here. And then on this other side, and two, we're still just kind of following our slopes, making sure we have those. Oops, I don't think I need to go back that far. We can go down this way and try your best to stay within those lanes there. And there's gonna be a good solution curve there. So again, that's all they're asking from us. Okay, for the next part, they are wanting us to write an equation of the line tangent at the point zero one. 
and then we're going to use that to approximate. So here, what you need to do, again, you're given your x and y. We do need to evaluate our derivative at the point 0, 1. And so that's going to give us 3 minus 1 times cosine of 0. And so that's going to give us a slope of 2. So we have y minus y1 equals our slope times x minus x1. And so we have y minus 1 equals 2x. Now we need to change that y over to f of x equals 2x plus 1. And then we need to substitute in 0 0.2. And again, once you make this substitution, you don't really need to do much more. We're going to leave it like that. That does receive our full credit. All right, so now for part C, we are going to actually find that original equation. And so we're going to have to do our separate and our integrate. So let's see what that equation was originally. We had dy dx is equal to 3 minus y cosine x. And so we do need to separate our variables. So we're going to have dy over 3 minus y equals cosine of x dx. And now we are going to integrate both sides. So that's 1 over 3 minus y dy is the integral of cosine x dx. And the derivative of the bottom is almost the top. So notice that derivative is negative 1. So I'm going to put that negative 1 on the outside there. So that's going to go ahead and allow us to have a negative and then natural log, negative 1 times the natural log, absolute value of 3 minus y. And over on the other side, if we integrate cosine, we're going to have sine x and then plus c. And so up here we have negative natural log, absolute value of 3 minus y equals sine x plus c. And now we're going to use our initial conditions to solve. So those initial conditions, we are going to substitute in 0, 1. And so when we do that, we have negative natural log absolute value of 3 minus 1 equals sine of 0 plus c. And so we have the negative natural log of 2 is our constant value. So we're going to go back and we have uh, our original equation, negative natural log absolute value of 3 minus y. equals sine of x minus natural log 2. And so solving for this, we can move our negative over. So we have negative, or I'm sorry, natural log 3 minus y equals negative sine x plus natural log 2. And then we're going to say e raised to both sides. And so what that's going to allow us to do is to remove our natural log. And so we're left with 3 minus y equals e raised to this entire other side. So negative sine x plus natural log 2. It's okay to leave it that way. We're going to subtract our 3 over and then move that negative. So we're going to have e to the negative sine x plus natural log 2 and then minus 3 and then the negative on the outside. Okay, for our next problem, we need to find the particular solution through that uh, given equation from 1 to 5 such that the line y equals negative 2 is tangent to the graph of f. So um, if the line y equals 2 is tangent to the graph, since that's talking about the line, then I know the slope of that line dy dx is 0. And since we know our derivative here is going to have to be 0, then we can substitute in our negative 2 and solve for x. 
So that's going to lead us to say 0 equals, and we're going to have 3 minus x all over negative 2. So we're going to have 0 equals 3 minus x. So from here we see that x has to be 3. So now we've found that point of tangency. Now for this next part, it wants us to tell whether or not we have a local min, max, or neither. Now we're told here that our derivative is zero. So as long as we have established that dy dx at the given point, and that point would be at three negative two, we know that is going to be zero. So we do have to mention that so that they know, the reader knows, we are talking about a critical point. Now for the next part, to talk about a local min or max, we can do our second derivative test here. So let's go ahead and find that second derivative. <clears throat> so dy, or sorry, the second derivative, that would be useful. Here we're going to do the bottom, because we're going to do our quotient rule, so we have the bottom times the derivative of the top, so that's going to be a negative 1 minus the top, which is 3 minus x, times the derivative of the bottom, so that's going to be dy dx, and that's going to be all over the bottom squared, so that's going to be y squared, and we do need to make sure we show that derivative. And so when we substitute in there, it looks like we're going to end up with a positive one-half. And so notice that that tells us that our graph is concave up like a cup. So here we can say that at the point x equals 3, uh, our graph would have, or let's see, what's the name of this, f? So f will have a relative min because, and we found that um, f is concave up at x equals 3. All right, so now let's move on to our next problem. And this next set wants us to find uh, our particular solution. So here, and we've got our initial condition is at 6, negative 4. So we need to find y equals g of x. So again, we're going to do our separate, integrate, add c, find c. So we have dy dx. Now I'm just going to restate the problem down here. So 3 minus x all over y. And we do need to separate our variables. So this time y is going to go up here. y dy is going to equal 3 minus x times dx. And as usual, we do need to integrate both sides. So we're going to integrate y dy equals the integral of 3 minus x dx. And so finding that antiderivative there, we know from this side we're going to have 1 half y squared equals, and then over on the other side we're going to have 3x minus 1 half x squared, and we do have plus c. Now we're going to use our initial conditions to solve for c. So we're going to substitute in place of y, it's going to be negative 4. So I have 1 half times negative 4, all squared, equals 3 times 6 minus 1 half times 6 squared plus c. And so let's see, if we're going to go through and solve that, we're going to have 8 uh, equals 18 minus, uh, let's see, 36 and half of 36 is 18 plus c. So we find that c is going to be 8. So always make sure you can solve for c. Now we're ready to solve for y. So we're going to go back. We have 1 half y squared equals 3x minus 1 half x squared and then plus 8. 
I'm going to multiply everything through by 2 to get rid of that, and we can just leave it. I don't think I would take the time to actually multiply all that out. And then our next step, we do need to take the square root, and do remember it is plus or minus, so we need to go look at our y value of that particular solution to determine which one it is. And notice we have to go through that negative y, so we're going to have a negative out here. And then we're going to have 2 times our 3x minus 1 half x squared plus 8. Okay, for this problem, um, the first question just really wants us to prove that the derivative of this is what they're giving us. So it almost feels like a trick question, but it's not. It's really wanting us just to prove that. So let's go through our derivative. And of course, the first one, you're going to have to do the product rule. So we're going to have our first times the derivative of the second. So that's going to be 2y dy dx plus the second times the derivative of the first. And minus, and we're going to go through this again, the first times the derivative of the second, dy dx, plus second times the derivative of the first. And then we're all, that's going to be equal to zero. And be careful there, a lot of people will put six. All right, so let's clean this up a little bit. So we have 2xy dy dx plus y squared. And then from here, we're going to have minus x cubed dy dx minus 3x squared y, and that's equal to 0. And now we're going to try to separate out all of these variables, and we're going to keep our 2xy dy dx on one side, and we're also going to keep negative x cubed dy dx on one side. Over on the other side, I would subtract over our y squared, and I need to add our 3x squared y. Now, our next step, we would have to factor out that dy dx, so we are going to factor that out, dy dx, and then that's going to be 2xy minus x cubed, and we do have to be careful and use all of the right notation here. And then finally, we're going to divide both sides, so dy dx is going to be equal to negative y squared plus 3x squared y, and that's going to be all over 2xy minus x cubed. Okay, for our next part, um, it wants us to find all of the points on the curve whose x-coordinate is 1, and then write an equation of a tangent line at each of those points. So we need to figure out what's going on when x is 1. So to start off, we're going to plug in 1 for x. If we do that, we have y squared minus y equals 6, and we can move that 6 over. And we have something we can factor, so we're going to have y minus 3 times y plus 2 is 0. So notice we're going to have two y coordinates here. One for y is 3, and the other y is going to be negative 2. So we have two values there that we can um, have an x coordinate of 1. And so we need to write now an equation for a tangent line at each of those points. So we know our x value is 1, and we know our y values here are 3 and negative 2. So we do need to go through and find our derivative value for each one of those, so we can write our tangent lines. So for the first one, we need to find the value of dy dx evaluated at the point 1, 3. So we're going to go back up and substitute into our derivative that we were given. And when we do that, um, let's see what we're going to get. In the top, we're going to have uh, 3 times 3 times 1. So we're going to have 9 minus, looks like 9, over. And then the bottom is going to be 6 minus 1. 
So that's going to give us a slope of zero. So that tells me that's a vertical line. So the equation for that line is just going to be y equals 3. Now we need to move on and do the other line. So here again, we need to find our slope, dy dx. And this time we're going to find it at the point 1, negative 2. And when we substitute that in, that's going to give us, looks like it's going to be 2. And so now we can go through and write that equation. We're going to have y minus y1 equals our slope times x minus 1. Okay, for our next part, this wants us to find where the tangent line is vertical. So that means we have an undefined slope. So that's going to tell me that the denominator needs to be equal to 0. So I'm going to take our denominator, which is 2xy, and let's see, minus x cubed, and I need to see when that is equal to 0. So we can pull out, let's see, we can factor out an x, and so that's going to leave us with 2y minus x squared. That's going to be equal to 0. And so that means that this is going to occur when either x is 0 or when x uh, squared equals 2y or x is the square root of 2y. And now we can go back and we can um, look and see what, um, you know, I don't, I, let's go back and change. Let's just leave that, because if we left it just y equals 1 half x squared, that's going to make solving that a little bit easier. So let's, let's go back and do that. I think I had a brain fart there. All right, so we know our y values. So we can go back up now and substitute in. And so, let's see, if we let x be 0, well then, that's not going to work. We're going to end up with 0 in the denominator. So, here, that, that's not going to generate anything for us. So, we're not going to even consider that one. We're just going to leave it there. But now, I know that y is 1 half x squared. I can go back up to the original. Um, and substitute in. So our original, and I'm going to rewrite that so we can see it, we have xy cubed minus x cubed y, and that's equal to 6. And here's why I wanted, I changed my mind to leave it, is because now I can go plug in. So I'm going to have x times 1 half x squared all cubed minus x cubed times and that y again is 1 half x squared. And all of that is equal to 6. So we can solve this equation. Um, let's see, that's going to be x to the 6 and 1. So that's going to be x to the 7th. And so that's going to give us... So this was originally squared. I miswrote that. Let's go fix that. I was looking at why we had such a large number there. So that's going to be 2 times 2 plus 1. So we're going to have 1 fourth x to the fifth minus, and then over on this other one, we're going to have 1 half x to the fifth. I was wondering why we were not getting like terms there. And so when we put that together, we're going to have negative 1 fourth x to the fifth equals 6. And so I'm going to multiply that 1 fourth over. So I'm going to have x to the fifth equals negative 24. So here x is going to be the fifth root of negative 24. Okay, so in part A, we're going to find our differential equation. And we have the initial solution, 0, 1 half, so again, we've got to remember that's going to be what we plug in to find C. So we're going to go ahead and start separating. And when we do that, we're going to have e to the 2y dy equals 3x squared dx. And now we're going to integrate both sides. So e to the, net, or e to the 2y dy equals the integral of 3x squared dx. 
Okay, now we know if we integrate e to the x, we get e to the x. So here, I know I'm going to get e to the 2y, but I have an extra 2 up there, so we're going to balance that with a 1 half is equal to, and here I'm going to add 1 to the exponent and divide. So that's going to give us x cubed plus c. And again, now we're ready to substitute in our initial value of 0, 1 half. So here I'm going to look at 0, 1 half and substitute that in. So I'm going to have 1 half e to the 2 times a half equals x cubed plus c. And so here we're going to have 1 half e. That's going to be our c value. So coming back, we can put this equation together where we have 1 half um, e to the 2y equals x cubed plus 1 half e. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 because, again, we are solving for y. <coughs> so we're going to have e to the 2y equals 2 times x cubed plus 1 half e. And just like earlier, whenever we had e, and because we wanted to get rid of natural log, here to get rid of e on this side, we're going to do the natural log of both sides. So natural log of e to the 2y equals natural log. And it's just going to be everything over here. So 2 times x cubed plus 1 half e. And now... We know that natural log of e to the 2y is just 2y equals natural log of 2 times x cubed plus 1 half e. And now I'm going to divide by 2. So, oops, I guess I need a y there instead of a 2. So that's going to be 1 half times all of this. And you can leave this just absolutely terrible looking. It will be okay. All right, so now let's move on. And for part B, it's wanting us to talk about the domain and range of all of this. So keep in mind with the graph of a natural log, that graph, natural log graph, does something like this. Now, granted, we have all kinds of craziness going on with it, but that's still our basic graph. So, let's talk about what's probably going to happen for our domain. Notice that domain is not going to be all real numbers by any means. So, that domain is going to be from 0 not included to infinity. And then the range for this function is going to be the y value. So it looks like that was going to be from negative infinity up to positive infinity.